Here we are with our Sweet CRM series again, and today I'm going to show you how to create, edit, and delete a user. So we point at the little guy in the upper right, click on Admin, and that's going to take us to the administration area that we've been working in quite a lot lately. Now we see the first thing here is user management, so let's click on that. It may be a little slow loading up depending on your server. Here's a new screen you haven't seen before, <clears throat> new format for the screen. It's listing the users, and then over here is a new menu. And the users, what it shows, these are customizable. You can turn these on or off, add certain things, and rearrange them. Right now it's name, user, name, title, department, email, phone, status, system administrator. So this has a little check mark, which means it is a system administrator and you'll see this with other users as well. If they are or if they're not, it'll be marked or not. Active, that's the status, it's an active user or not. The email address, the phone number will be here if it's actually entered. The administrator is a title, username is admin, and the full name is system, first name, administrator, last name. That's how that works. We'll get into customizing these kinds of things later in another video. Right now I want to focus on creating a new user. So we click on here in the upper left. That brings up this form where the asterisks are required fields. And in the first section here, user profile, uh, the username, status, and last name are the only required fields. Now we can collapse these and then look at the next section or just scroll down. Employee information is all the detailed information about them with relationship to your company. And if you collapse that, you'll see the last section, email settings. Email address has an asterisk, so it's required. And that's because the temporary password is sent to the user. They use that to log in the first time and then change our password so that no one knows it, not even the administrator. And this is the primary email address. Then you'll add another one as well, if you want. Email client, you can change that here. Sweet CRM email client is a built-in one. External email client, you can tell it where it is. And leave the editor default. You can change it if you want depends on what you know about. So let's go back up to the top. We don't need the employee information because there's nothing required, so we'll leave that collapsed. Open this, and we're going to make the username that's this mine. So we type in the username that we want. You can see it's already been used before, once. And then the first name. All right, and the last name. Now you can also just double click and then just click on that. Regular user or system administrator. System administrator will have access just like the admin does. Regular user doesn't. You can upload a photo if you want as well. We're not gonna do that right now. The only other thing we have to come up with is the email address. So let's go ahead and put in the email address. And there it is. Okay. Now, if you don't have an email address set up yet, you need to go back to the cPanel and you need to set that up. But we've got an email address. We put it in and we hit save. Now that's going to save the user. The user is created at that point. Okay. Still loading, you can see up here. Alright, so there it is. Now there's no photo, because we didn't upload one. It says what type of user. So this looks like it's just viewing the information, which it is. It's just a view of the information. Alright, you can unpack this and look at the details. There's nothing in there because we didn't put anything in there. Roles, etc. But up here, you've got advanced. You've got access. This is where you, you can see what they have access to throughout the system. Because you can turn these on and off. It's really a brilliant uh, program. Okay. Now, like I said, the email address, the e email address is where the password will be sent, the temporary password, and I'll show you what that looks like. It should have automatically been sent. So let's check the email and make sure. And in fact, yes, new account information. I'll show you that. 
That's what it looks like. Here is your account username and temporary password. There's username, that's the password, that's the address to log in. So that happens to be the address that I created for the CRM. So this is the username, the password, and that's the address of the CRM that I created when I installed the CRM to begin with. Okay, so that's the email you're going to get. You can see small guy on top, CRM. That's, um, that's what we told it to use when we set up the uh, server settings in the other video. All right, so now here we've got our user, but what if we want to edit something? Well, you go to Actions and choose Edit. Now it's going to take us back to that interface that we saw before. Here it is. So we can change anything we want here. Let's go into the advanced because we never looked at that. Okay, In the advanced, we've got a lot of things we can do. Some of it won't make sense yet, but it will later. When we talk about importing and exporting data, this will make sense. Notify on assignment, that's where when you assign a lead to this user, there will be an automatic email generated to them that will notify them that they've got this assigned to them. So you want to leave that marked. This is where you can set up the a default for pop-ups, and email in invitation notifications, desktop notifications can be enabled here. We'll get into that in detail later. Show full names. This is where and it says here, display users' full names instead of their usernames and assignment fields. So that's up to you. The modules, this is what by default will be available to the user for customizing his all menu. In another video, we covered the all menu and customizing it. So this is, you can control what the user has accessible to them when they first log in and they want to customize. They can still customize out of the things you allow them to, they can then hide or make visible certain things and reorder them. And the sub-panel tabs, don't worry about that. So here you can set the uh, date format, the time format, currency, time zone, all kinds of things here. You want to use the user wizard prompt. That means that when they first log in, they'll be prompted to go through this wizard to set up their account properly. So time zone is important. So wherever that user is, this has to be set appropriately, so the time will be reflected correctly. Now, I'm in Los Angeles, so that's minus 7, I know. This is organized by the GMT zones, not alphabetically. So you got to get up to the general area where you are. Minus 7 is where we are. Sometimes it's minus 8. There it is, Los Angeles, America, Los Angeles. Now, I don't like these formats. Um, I prefer the year, month, and day and the reason is for organizing and filing that when you uh, order it uh, numerically or alphabetically it will show the date first and it will or order it by the year first. You don't want to see December of five years ago grouped in with the December of this year. It make, doesn't make any sense generally speaking. And then time zone, a uh, time format, I prefer the military time. So there it is. And like that with a dot. That's my preference. Set it according to your preference or uh, set it as uh, as you wish for the user, though. Remember, this is for that user. Dollars, decimals. Uh, some cultures use a comma to separate the decimal and some a period like ours. And the ones that use a comma don't use comma for thousands separator. So you got to be sensitive to that or let them set it themselves. This also allows you to reorganize how they're addressed, how that shows up. And the calendar options we'll get to later. So then when you're finished editing, go ahead and hit save. When it's saved, you're kicked back to this view, okay, the view mode. Now, the last thing we need to know how to do is how to delete. So we go to actions, but there it is, it's going to respond, delete. Now I'm going to delete this one, so you see what it is. It warns you that when you delete this, it can't be reversed. Well, it can be by reinserting all the information, but there's no trash can like you have on uh, a lot of desktops. So it'll be deleted. After the user is deleted, any workflow definitions and reports involving the user might need to be updated. So things assigned to that user will have to be assigned to someone else. Hit OK. 
It's best to do that reassigning before you delete the user. And it's gone. You can see the list of users here. So if you wanted to get back to this list of users, you can always click the View Users and it'll bring you back to this. And you'll see. All right, that's what we're seeing is the View Users. And that's how you create, edit, and delete users. Let's break for a few seconds just to promote Small Guy on Top. I hope you learned a lot from our videos and that you will go to our site at smallguyontop.com for articles and downloadable materials. Please subscribe to our Daily Motion and YouTube channels. YouTube and Daily Motion.